They say you'll never really understand how much your parents did for you until you have your own kid. And for my wife and I, this has been so true over the last 15 months as we have, uh, you know, had this little tiny baby that we brought home. And then you have this kid that you're trying to just keep alive around the clock who just sleeps and eats mostly. And now as she's 15 months old, we're starting to parent. And, and it feels like the very early stages of introducing the word no and telling her what she can get into and what she can't get into and, and figuring out obedience and reading these parenting books. And I look back at my parents and Paige's parents and go, wow, you you, you did all of this for me. And when I was, you know, a kid, zero to five, I have little to no memories. And then a few memories scattered in when you're, you know, six, seven, eight. And then really that's where you, I, I feel like for me personally, I start remembering my childhood. And I, I look back on that and think if I would have known my parents, like if I could understand what they were trying to accomplish, how much would that have changed the way that I lived my life with them, the, my, my relationship with them, my my obedience even, if I would have known their heart for me? Because I look at that now and it seems so obvious to me. I look at little Piper and I'm like, if you would just know that my desire for you is that you don't get hurt, then you wouldn't want to do half the things that you're doing, or you wouldn't c come running towards the oven as I'm opening it, and I tell you no, and then you know you cry and break down because you can't touch the hot oven, and I'm like, ah, if you only knew my heart was to protect you and was, was the best thing for you. And I love Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17, verse 3. He says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. And what an awesome guiding light, a north star to read through scripture and to walk through my life with Jesus to go, God, I want to know you more because that's the basis of eternal life. That if I'm not just a body, I'm a soul and that will go into eternity and I can experience that eternal life now. What if my number one goal was to just know you, God, because I'm confident that the more that I know and experience the God of the Bible, the more I will understand why he calls me to live the way that I do, why he asks me to do the things that he's asked me to do with, with my finances, with my, my, my sexuality, with uh, the, the way that I uh, approach enemies and strangers and, and the people out in, in the, the public sphere of just going, man, the more that I know God, as I read through his word and understand what he's asking of me, it'll be a no-brainer. Right? The, the things that God asked me to stay away from, what if they weren't just because God is going, this is the way that I want you to do life? What if it was, I am a loving, all-knowing God that has, I created the human machine, right? I love the way he even precedents the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of slavery, and then he gives him the Ten Commandments. He says, before I will tell you anything to do, I want to remind you of who I am. And I think he doubles down on that in John chapter 17 going, this is what eternal life's all about. Right? This makes Christianity different than any other religion in the world because it's not a list of do's and don'ts. And it's not a tipping of the scales of morality. He goes, know me. Know Jesus Christ whom I've sent, and the rest will flow from that knowledge as you understand my character. What a cool way, what a cool lens to look through today as I approach my walk with Jesus. Thanks, Dosers. We'll see you tomorrow.